well. For more now on the prospects and uh, what all this means for the single currency of the euro, of course, we're joined by National Australia Bank's head of market economics for Europe, Tom Vosa. Tom, thanks so much for coming to speak to us. I want to start by asking you uh, about a clip we heard there mm -hmm. from an analyst, Steve Hang. He was saying that these stress tests on European banks, are, he described them as being half-baked. They're just not comprehensive enough. Uh, there is a problem that we think that some of this stuff is really marking their existing books to market rather than stressing them. For example, things which are in the banking book, not the trading book, those assets aren't coped. I wonder where all the Greek government bonds are being kept at the moment. Yeah. Probably not in the trading book. Again, the scenario, 17% haircut for Greek government bonds, 25% we think would be a little more accurate. And remember, the FSA stress tests on UK banks talked about 20 to 30% falls in property prices. When we're looking at Spanish banks, that's where probably the damage would be. So we would like to get more information about them. We would like to see them as stress tests, not simply marking existing assets to market. Interesting. You, you're saying that a more uh, accurate assumed loss on a, a Greek government debt default would be 25%, you, you say, yes. and I think that the, the market is looking at potentially 60%. Why, why the discrepancy between what the test will assume and what the markets yeah. are anticipating? Well, it rather depends on, if, if you think that a Greek default is inevitable, it depends when they do it. If they do it in the short run, then maybe a 25% haircut is fine. If we're looking at the Greek government being excluded from financial markets for three years, in three years' time, their debt-to-GDP ratio, roughly around 155% of GDP, at which stage the default becomes much bigger, and that's when you'd be looking at a 60% uh, loss. So this is precisely why we need more details on how the tests are being conducted about the criteria itself. Uh, indeed, and in three years' time, of course, if the banks had recapitalised themselves, then they might be willing to withstand a 60% loss because they've had three years of essentially boosting their profits through the steepness of the yield curve, net interest income. And you mentioned a very specific concern there about Spanish banks. Uh, well, again, it's simply what are the exposures to the property market? We're told that large Spanish banks essentially have very little exposure to Spain because they have you know, moved their assets offshore. They have you know, large interests in the UK, large interests in Latin America. Mm -hmm. But obviously the smaller regional Spanish banks do have huge exposures to the property market. And there again, precisely how much of the fallen property prices are we looking at and what does that mean for their they need to be recapitalized. And Tom, very briefly, many investors are not just going to be looking at what these stress tests reveal, but at how uh, European Union responds to uh, recapitalizing banks that are weak, that need more cash. And I want to ask you about this report in the Financial Times uh, about the possibility of a, a 20 billion euro bailout fund, which would uh, essentially mean that you're using private sector money as opposed to government money to help these banks. A good idea? Uh, it's a good idea, but it's actually a, a really drop in the ocean. Remember the exposure of of, of German, uh, German, French and Italian banks to Portugal, Greece and Spain, 1.6 trillion euros. 20 billion euros really ain't going to do it if, uh, if we need to recapitalise all of that. So, good idea, but we need to see substantially more money. And remember, recapitalising the banks cannot be done through the European Stabilisation Fund. That's only to be used by sovereign governments uh, with help from the IMF and permission from the EU Commission. So, where's, very briefly, where's the cash going to come from? Well, it will probably have to come from the public sector, but via a roundabout, unfortunately, which means a sovereign will have to declare it needs a ESF first. Tom, thanks so much. Tom Vos, the head of market economics, the National Australia. Bank.